very good day to everybody once again this is bl branding the landscape and in this class we'll discuss about the futuristic preparations for covid 19 on brand business because we cannot say covid 19 has gone and uh, everything is done and uh, like uh, we are back to the old technologies definitely not like our world is split into two halves like uh, some they are trying to still get up from the covid okay and another one who has really benefited out of this covid okay so these are the futuristic preparations and of course it is for you my dear students and young researchers and you can reach me at dr.restaurant at the gmail so before beginning the session once again let me thank god for giving me this opportunity to deliver this useful session to share my knowledge among my fellow national international participants students and young researchers right so we'll have a short introduction towards this COVID-19 and the future of business, how a uh, digital transformation will take place. And whenever you say digital transformation, immediately you will think about technologies. It's not only about technologies. Okay, you have to transform. You have to make your mindset to transform to the digital world. And there are some pandemic induced reactions. We call it as the new normal. Okay. so. We have not got uh, the traditional is gone and we are taking a new one. No, we are taking a new form of a normal. Okay. And then we understand the human element is the key to success. So not like computers will take our place. Human element is the key to success. Okay. And we discuss about the employee well-being. Then we discuss about cost cutting and people cutting. Okay. Whenever an uh, industry or maybe company is concerned, we try to cut down the cost and we try to cut down the people in order to enjoy the benefit okay, or the profit. Then we discuss about the administrative or maybe executive priorities. We try to prioritize the IT resiliency about the performance and growth. Then broader the reach, greater the winner. Okay. Then finally, we are going to summarize with the businesses partnering and collaboration and health is the key to sustainability okay so after all health is very very important okay right so we are on to the old customs health is very very important for well, that is the key approach to sustainability so as i told you i had already given five individual works for you please complete them i will be checking them as soon as possible and at regular intervals, I'll be giving you some short videos to discuss the knowledge in our topics. Right. right. So this is a short introduction, COVID-19 and the future of business. For example, uh, earlier days, we had very little problem. Okay. But now, everything you take forward is a problem. Okay. Everything you say, okay, it's a priority. I have to complete this task. I have to complete assignment one. It is a priority. I have to get up early and prepare for my classes. It's a priority. I have to uh, prepare for my competitive exams. It's a priority. My business should go on, should flourish. Well, that's a priority. So when everything is a priority, nothing is a priority. You can read this maybe five times. Okay. When everything is a priority, nothing is a priority. Okay. So when executives, uh, when they struggle out of this post-COVID business environment. So they will find ways to uh, make a better uh, prospect. Okay. So two years ago, like uh, before, like uh, when the COVID actually started. So uh, like uh, relatively very few executives were involved in this crisis management, enterprise agility, cost management, workforce resiliency, innovation, open source platform, cash flow management. So they had very less uh, pressure to do this but after covid everybody were forced to do it because if they don't somebody else will take their position some new technology will take its position okay so they are very much critical to business post covid okay so the top executives but definitely when when we ask the administration they will tell a different scenario every time okay but if you ask the employees they will tell the real facts okay so executives top priorities are shifting and they were not at all uh, very sure about what will happen in the future okay so the leaders are expecting more out of their transformation initiatives and that is where they try to identify competition and maybe workforce resilience 
into what you call it to be digital transformation. So as I once again tell you, like digital transformation is not about technologies, it, about, it is all about transforming ourselves. Okay. So transformation we will we can find in majority of the organizations. Okay. So there has been a greater focus on the relationship, the well-being, okay, about the customers and about the collaboration or maybe partnering opportunities. For example, here if you can see, okay, workforce safety and security, customer retention, cost management, cash flow liquidity management, enterprise agility, digital transformation. So overall you see, okay, digital transformation the lowest, 62%. But all here 87, 86, 92. So we can find. Okay. So on a scale of 100 percentage, we are still yet to make a digital impact. And this has been with the uh, collaboration opportunities as well with regards to upgrading the technologies even. Okay. So it's not concerned about one one sphere alone. We are considering all the spheres, and for that we need more of the digital transformation. So digital transformation is not about technology, you have to update, you have to upgrade, you have to socially connect with the well-being. So adaptability is now a very important competency and of course it's a, uh, it is uh, changing at a rapid pace even. Okay. So COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated this digital transformation at 59 percentage okay, and 66 percentage they say they were able to complete the initiatives that were encountering the resistance. So cultural shift is defensive and of course reducing the cost, reducing the, uh, the unwanted cost, of course, okay, that is good. But reducing the necessary cost, re reducing the uh, necessary uh, cost that is associated with the manpower, okay, so that might uh, topple the management even, that might cause okay a negative impact on the company or maybe the organization so whenever you are going for transformation you have to cut down the unwanted cost rather than the essential cost okay so the organization see a need for speed so covid 19 has created a sense of urgency around like digital in the transformation because when everybody were in the homes and you have to earn for your living so what you will do you have to digitalize so those of the uh, companies, organizations were forced to do it. Even the educational sector is also, they were forced to take online. How long they will sit in their home? Okay. So you have to accelerate the business. Okay. So 59 percentage accelerated the digital transformation while 66 percentage completed the initiatives that previously encountered resistance. So what and all the drawbacks, what and all the disadvantages that we face, we try to solve those problems first of all and then we are able to digitally transform. So that is uh, what you have to be a need for speed post pandemic. Okay. So there has been post, uh, I mean pandemic induced reactions as well. So uh, before the pandemic many organizations were not much into the technological capabilities. Okay, they were feeling lazy. Okay, no problem. We had traditional platform, we had physical communication and this is where uh, they, uh, the mistake really happened. Okay, so uh, in the pan uh, years pandemic induced reactions, like uh, there has been confusions, like what we can do in order to uh, boost the sales, what we can do to get the level higher up. Okay, so you have to go for resilience as well as reliance on the tech platforms as well, and that became uh, very uh, like uh, had a broader reach even and. Uh, even though, even though like uh, the full technology was not actually reached, but still uh, everybody started using the technologies for the fuller potential. Okay. So there has been permanent changes to our organizational plan or maybe strategy. So COVID-19 has altered, has completely altered how the organizations should operate. Okay. Like everybody was into now hybrid mode. Yes. Online, offline. Online during the pandemic, offline, not pandemic. So that is how we shift ourselves. For example, if the employee is having uh, some problems, he has some physical problems, he can continue the work online. Okay. So that is how it goes. So 55% of the respondents, according to the survey, they said that pandemic has resulted in 
permanent changes to our organization strategy. Where 60 percentage they said they adjusted our approach to change the management or maybe accelerated the approach for the automation procedure. Okay, so that was what they said. And 65 percentage they said they were made to shift to cloud based business systems. Okay, so drive, Google Drive, cloud, storage, okay, everything made into impact and that uh, really uh, impacted the business. Okay, so based on the pandemic, like 55 percentage, 60 percentage, 64 percentage, okay, we are accustomed to change the management because of the digital technologies. So this is the new normal. Uh, 64 percentage they shifted to more cloud based business activities. 60 percentage accelerated, speed up, okay, speeded up the process automation. 60 percentage adjusted to the change management, okay. 55 percentage made permanent changes to the organizational strategy. If you can see everything above 50 percentage, which means that we are forced, we are forced, not like it's compulsion, the situation has changed us. Okay, and we have to do this. Okay, and I I regard this as new normal because this is how it is going to be, and it is going to be normal. Okay. So we have to invest in technologies. So because these technologies are are going to be the future. Maybe artificial intelligence, or maybe Internet of Things, or maybe blockchain, or maybe cloud, or maybe green computing, or maybe natural language processing. Everything, machine learning. Everything is going to be a future and this is how you are going to digitally transform. So like whatever may be the uh, leadership that is concerned with the organization or the institutions. So the benefits speak a lot whenever you are going to digitally transform. Okay. So the organizations has to make sure that the people are capable, resilient and adaptable as when, when the technologies try to adapt its standards. Okay. So this is very, very important. This is very, very important. Human element, human element. Once again, I'm telling you, human element is the key to success. So whenever you are going to expand all the competencies with regards to technologies, the secret to success is human resource. Without human resource, you cannot do anything. Because human has their previous experiences, has the ability to deal, has the ability to uh, lead the entire team. Okay, so business competencies, Whenever it requires workforce training or maybe customer uh, experience management, definitely human success or maybe human factor, human resources are very, very important. Okay. So uh, more than three quarters of the executives, they expect the change customer behavior to continue after COVID-19. For example, we are in the mindset, okay, after this COVID-19, we have to digitalize. We have to uh, mix up with people. Okay get of course mix up with people means like partnering and collaboration only okay but people are not in are very safe enough okay they don't want to mingle with people quite often because they were having the safety scare okay so only partnering collaboration only okay and of course face to face contact also they are doing it online in the zoom in the microsoft in the uh, webex platform meetings as well so everywhere like shopping or maybe uh, freight trans uh, transportation, um, uh, transferring of goods, everything like customer service interaction, everything has been made online thanks to the technology. Okay, we are made to change. So, 84 percentage of the executives they say that customer experience management will be a higher priority, and over the next two years, it it was compared to only 35 percentage just two years ago. Okay, so customer experience management is our top priority now. From 35 percentage, after the pandemic, it has come up to 84 percentage. So that much importance has been given as the top priority. Okay, and employee satisfaction has been deprioritized. Of course, employees are the pillars of the organization, but their uh, strategy, their satisfaction has been given low priority. Okay, so. Um, 60 percentage of the executives they said that AI based uh, customer engagement tools definitely can achieve the goals. Chatbots, you know, chatbot, yes, chatbots are handling upwards after the COVID pandemic, like 80 percentage of the customer assistant traffic during the pandemic, and definitely better 
customer experiences are further enhanced if you go with the digital transformation okay so it is all about how you connect with the customers how you try to have the or enjoy the well-being of the customers that really matters okay so if you are not uh, regularly meeting the employees if the employees are not updating not upgrading not training okay as per the requirements and definitely their priorities their mental well-being uh, their thinking would be different okay so and definitely it will not help to the uh, development or be the growth of the organization so employee well-being is very very important and even in the covid pandemic like people whenever they are in the online platforms uh, they had like intense pressure too much of pressure okay <laughs> like uh, you can you can take any gender like male or maybe female female having more pressure male having more pressure okay so they have to look after the kids they have to look after the uh, i mean making the food and so on they have to look on to uh, taking care of the business okay maybe if they are working under another one sector they have to be working under the boss so everything uh, is under intense pressure and of course employee well-being is the top priority have you uh, come across this news like um, software companies big software companies like tata consultancy services cognizant technical solutions they have uh, reduced the uh, work day schedule for example in a week they will work for just three days or maybe four days etc so remaining three days holiday they are they are left to enjoy okay so this reduces the pressure so four days they can work three days off so they can spend time with their family go on a vacation maybe if there is a, the lockdown has been released then they, they, they can go enjoy okay they, they can have a very good time okay so um, most of the cases employers the top management people they overestimate the effectiveness of their support and training efforts they always boast everything is good my organization is performing very good my plans are working as per policy my employees are obeying but real scenario it doesn't work okay so only about half of the employees they say they believe that the employer is genuinely concerned about the welfare but uh, more than that they are not they are not having the trust on the employers okay so there is massive opportunity for the leaders who can get this right when most of them seem to be struggling okay so there should be proper relationship okay visible visible relationship between the employees and the employer and the relationship should be strengthened employee well-being should be the top priority and if this goes then definitely the organization will develop okay so the trust gap and the perception or maybe understanding is very important so trust gap is not just about understanding or maybe perception okay right so there should be some foundation for the employee skepticism okay about the corporate commitment how they are physically mentally bonded with the company's values mission vision as well so 22 percentage of the people have either been temporarily furloughed or maybe permanently laid off since the pandemic began so they had uh, either like either like elikelik or maybe completely done okay with the things okay so corporate priorities on the cost containment and technology resources as well definitely they are sending the signals that human resources are replaceable but definitely it is not so human resources are considered as an asset as a value for the institution or the organization so cost cutting and people cutting you know why this happens because of automation increase automation adopting new technologies like artificial intelligence contact less activity these are the reasons why we cut down the cost we cut down the people okay and the rising cost management priority definitely it can uh, reduce the work of the people even like uh, during the pandemic uh, the those who work in as a lift operator they lost the most of them they lost their jobs because the shops the malls the organizations the institutions were all closed and the lift operator 
they know only to operate the lift, go up and down. Okay, they lost their jobs. Okay, because of contactless activity, because of increased automation. Okay, so this is one such example. Okay, so personal connections definitely will help to strengthen the corporate cultures and cost cutting happens. Okay, so this is the problem. Employees and executives don't really see eye to eye. They are not having a visible relationship. Okay. So 74% of the employers, 38% of the employees like help learn the skills needed to work in a new way. And then 80, 46. Okay. Supporting the physical as well as emotional health of the workforce. And 86, 51. Okay. They are providing clear guidelines and expectations for how the organization will work. If you can see, employers more, employees less. But employees should be more. They are the real backbone of the organization. But what happens? Reverse. Okay. So that is how really happens. And if, if it, this is going to happen, then definitely there will be a mismatch. Fine. So executives, the top level management are of course defining the organization vision, not the employees. Okay. Because they are not having a good relationship. Okay. So if if the employer is going on firing the employees, shouting, yelling, firing the people out of the jobs, like we saw in Twitter, you have gone through the news. Elon Musk, the CEO of Twitter, has fired many of the experienced employees. And if this goes on, what will happen to Twitter? Okay, now again today's news, he is calling back again the fired employees. Okay, so this is very very important. The organization that you are uh, working on to is not fully about this firing. firing. Okay, so cost management, uh, organization agility definitely emerge as top priorities for the short term or maybe the long term as well. And uh, the pandemic has amplified the old business fears. So that has been a problem. Okay. So since 2020, okay, executive priorities, uh, there, have, there has been shuffling and then reshuffling has been going on. And uh, the priorities still continue to define the organization vision. So executives are looking inward in the wake of COVID-19, like uh, cost management, 87%. Enterprise agility, agility, 87%. Cash flow and liquidity management, 86%. Cyber security, cyber security concerns, very important, 76%. IT resiliency, 75%. Internet of things, cloud and mobility, 65%. New product development, 58%. New market entry, very less, that is 52%. Okay. So, the internal operation capabilities are underlooked okay like uh, we are not uh, adaptable to the new technologies still it has to be brought forward in the forthcoming years